We've all been there where we, we feel like life's just spinning our wheels, where we feel stuck in life. Of course, we've all have been there before at one time or another. And here's one of the reasons I think that's the case. Life keeps going. Amen. When you're discouraged, life keeps going. When you're stuck, life keeps going. When you're going through a hard season, life keeps going. Monday still comes, people. <laughs> it's coming tomorrow. No shock, right? But, but think of a car. Have you ever seen a car get stuck in the mud? What, what happens? The, the wheel is going, but the car is going nowhere. And actually what can happen at times, if the car goes nowhere and the wheel keeps spinning, the hole can actually get deeper and deeper. And the same thing can happen to us in life. Sometimes it feels like we're just spinning our wheels. We're moving, but we're still stuck. We're still trying, but it doesn't feel like we're getting anywhere. We're doing our best, but our hole keeps getting bigger and bigger. bigger. One of the hardest things about feeling stuck is that it can feel like it's always going to be this way. Man, I'm trying so hard right now, but I still feel stuck. Man, I'm doing the best that I can, but I feel stuck and neutral. I have good news for you hamsters out there. <laughs> just, I have good news for all of us. Thankfully, we don't have to stay stuck. There are so many things that the Bible can teach us about how to get unstuck. But so that we're not here till New Year's Eve, because I know you have plans, I'm just going to talk about three things today that we can do to get unstuck. So there's this dude named Asaph. Everybody say Asaph. So this dude named Asaph, and thankfully, he recorded his struggles in the Psalms. He actually wrote 12 Psalms, and in this Psalm, he's, he's, he's writing down some of his struggles, but then it's like a light bulb went off in his head. And it says, it says this in Psalm 77, you can follow along on the screen, um, uh, on your phone, if you have a paper Bible, whatever works best for you, it says this in Psalm 77, Lord... Circle this if you're taking notes. I will remember. Lord, I will remember what you did. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will spend time. Circle the word time. That's so important. Thinking about everything you've done. I will consider all your mighty acts. You know, if you're going to be someone that goes from stuck to unstuck, simply you need to remember. Remember. You need to remember, remembering what God has done for us can give us great perspective and can be a huge confidence boost. Listen to Asaph's determination. I, twice he says it, I will remember. See, going through a hard time can keep us stuck. Worrying through a hard time can make the hole get bigger. That said, remembering what God has done for you can help us get unstuck. You know, there have been times in my life where I've gone through a hard season or I've, I've been worried and it just keeps like it keeps going and going. But I but I get into that place where I remember what God has done and it literally has taken me from a worried heart to a peaceful heart, from a worried heart to a healthy perspective. It's like. God, you did it before. Why can't you do it again? You can do it again. Why am I even worried right now? Now let's make this real. Let's say that you're worried right now. Do you remember the last time you were worried about something? And see, if, you've, if you're a Christ follower in here and you've lived this life any length of time, remember the last time you worried about something? He provided Remember the last time it looked really bleak and you didn't know what you were going to do? In his timing and in his way, he got you out. Remember the last time you went through a difficult season? I'm not saying it was easy, but he helped you get through it even when it feels like you'll never get through it. And guess what? He can do it again. He can do it again. Remembering what God has done for us can bring us peace 
it can calm our hearts and give us a confidence that, yes, you can do it again. Why am I worried? Everybody say that. Why am I worried? Why? God can do it. You've done so much. Another thing that remembering can do, it can take us from a worried heart to a thankful heart. Wow, God, I don't need to be worried. I can actually be thankful. You've done so much for me. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do, even though I don't know what it's, what it's going to be. Thank you. You've done so much, and I know you'll continue to be God. You know, it's, uh, it's so cool. My, my wife has this thing called the thankful journal, and it's really cool to, like, read through it and just, like, wow, all of these things that she's thankful for. It's actually, it's been challenging every once in a while. It's like, she'll write down, Lord, thank you for the beauty of your creation by seeing this bird today. I'm like, wow, she's being thankful for such little things. So then it's like, then it's like, cool, I wonder what she's thankful about me for. <laughs> so I start looking through, get to the next page after the bird, and I'm like, huh, nothing. Well, we didn't see each other that day. Maybe that's why she's not thankful. Where am I? Oh, there's Chris. Thankful to not see him much today. No, I'm, I'm just teasing. It's not like that at all. I know my wife loves me. Now, now, please don't hear me wrong. I'm not saying that you need to or should do what my wife's doing. You, you can, um, but you don't have to. That's just an idea. The more important thing is, if we're going to get off the hamster wheel of life from time to time, we need to take the time to remember what God has done for us. God, you've already done this. God, you're working in my life now. I just, I don't see how, but I know that you are. Even those little things, like, like, your creation or the birds. The, those things can make a difference. It can shift our hearts from work. Because what does Jesus say about the birds? What does he say about, he's like, hey, my father feeds them. You're more important than them. So even being thankful for birds can remind us that we're more important to God. We don't have to look at God's thankful journal and flip through and flip through to not see your name. Your name is on his page. Remember, you want to get unstuck. Remember. What's one of the first things you do before you before you start to drive your car, at least when you start learning, right? When we're rook rookies, we do this. When we're like, you know, experts, we forget about all this stuff for some reason, and that's why crashes happen, right? But, but what do they teach you to do? To look in your mirrors. Why? And they, and they actually tell you every once in a while, while you're driving, keep looking at them. Stay focused on them. Why? Because we have these things called motorcycles in California. And they, no, I'm just, uh, we do actually, but that's not allowed in other states, I don't think, where they just go like past the car. It's like, whoa, but why overall, why? Cars have blind spots. Cars have blind spots. And this, this thought process leads me to my next point. Number two, if you're going to go from stuck to unstuck, you need to reflect. You need to reflect when we're stuck, it's so important that we reflect. Since we all have blind spots, none of us are perfect, and that's okay. That's why Jesus came. He knows that we weren't going to be perfect. But that doesn't mean he wants us repeating the same things over and over again either. He doesn't want, he didn't die so that we could stay stuck in a rut. He loves us when we're in a rut, but he didn't die so that we could stay stuck there. So we have these blind spots in life. And because life is so daily, it doesn't stop if we're not careful. If we don't stop long enough to reflect, life just keeps going. But then we wonder why we're stuck. Life takes consistent adjustments. 
And when we reflect, it allows us to think about life so that we can be proactive about life instead of allowing life to dictate how we're going to live. Reflection is important, so I'm going to quickly talk about three mirrors that will help us look into them so that we can see our blind spots and help us get unstuck. And they all come from the Bible. Like I said, the Bible is chock full of smarts that can help us go from stuck to unstuck. Let's look in Romans 12. God's grace. God's grace. Now here's what's cool about God's grace. I'm going to stop right there for a moment. God's grace is here to forgive us and and, and clean us off of the wrongs and mistakes we've done. But God's grace is also there to help us live differently. And so God's grace can help us make the adjustments that we need. So you need to know this this morning. It says God's grace has been given to me. That means it's been given to you. You have God's grace. It's given to you. Do we accept it? Let me move on. So here's what I say to every one of you. Don't think of yourself more highly than you should. Be reasonable when you think about yourself. Keep in mind the faith that God has given to each of you. Mirror number one, to go from stuck to unstuck. Number one, take an honest assessment of myself. I love this verse. Hey, don't think highly of yourselves, but be reasonable. See, this verse protects us against going down the road of arrogance, and it also protects us going down the road of putting ourselves down all the time. That's not what God's going after. Just because he tells us to not be prideful and arrogant doesn't mean he's saying, yes, just keep putting yourself down. Oh, yeah, baby, you hit the mark on that one. You just keep putting yourself down. That's not what God means. It says, don't think highly of yourself, but be reasonable. Now, I'm not encouraging analysis paralysis, but ask yourself the tough questions. How am I really doing? And not just the surface answer. Do you know that we can be so used to giving the surface answer to other people that we give it to ourselves? And so we've got to get beyond the surface, the the real answers. Things like this. Do I have a few good friends that I can rely on? Am I staying focused on what matters most in life? Am I encouraged or discouraged? How is my marriage really going? Am I being a good spouse? Am I connecting with my kids? Am I being a good friend? How's my relationship with God going? Is there anything that I need to confess? Is there a certain purpose that God has for me during this season that I need to take that opportunity? How about this one? Am I living this life as if God loves me? How about this one? Am I living this life trusting him? Does my life reflect a trust for God? See, because you want to get unstuck. Reflect by taking an honest assessment of yourself. Here's the next one. We see it in a second mirror in Proverbs 27. It says this, wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. So mirror number two, ask for feedback. Now, not everyone should have your ear. Please, not everybody should have your ear, but a few should. A few should. We need their feedback. And one of the best questions that I've ever heard of that that you can ask someone else that I believe can give you good feedback is this. You might want to write it down. What's it like being on the other side of me? I'll say that one more time. What's it like being on the other side of me? Then once they give you feedback, once you punch them in the... No, I'm just teasing. Don't do that. (laughs) Once Once they give you feedback, thank them. They may have just helped you avoid a life accident because they saw, lovingly saw a blind spot and you asked for the feedback. Then once you hear it, not only do you thank them, you go back to mirror number one and you take an honest assessment 
God, is this true? What they're saying of me, is it true? Some of you are excited because you're flipping the script. You're like, cool, I get to give feedback. It's just, notice I said ask for feedback. So if someone asks you for feedback, all that pent up feedback rage that you want to get out, then you can give it, right? But, but even if they don't ask and you feel like you need to give it, ask them if it's okay to give it. Because do you see the difference between pushing your opinion on someone and asking to, for them to open their heart to your feedback? Totally, totally different. So get excited. Just not too excited, feedback people. Okay? Okay? You want to get unstuck? Reflect by asking for feedback. And here's the third mirror. And we find it in Psalm 139. And it says this. God, see what is in my heart. Know what is there. Test me. Know what I'm thinking. See if there's anything in me you don't like. Help me live in a way that's always right. So mirror number three is this, to go from stuck to unstuck. Ask God for his take. Ask God for his take. I know this can sound scary, and if I'm, I, if I'm being transparent with you, it's terrifying to me too. So I get it. And why can it be terrifying? Because we already know that not everything's perfect in this space. And we're already discouraged and we're already stuck. So why do we want to hear, about, hear from God his take when he knows everything? Right? Everything. I don't really want to hear from you, God. <laughs> um, but we have to understand something about God. He's not looking to put you down or tear you a new one every single day. Oh, I can't wait till they wake up in the morning so I can tear them down again. When God reveals something, sometimes he does have to confront us on things. But we have to remember he has our best interest at heart. He really, really does. He knows what's going on and he's doing his best to get rid of things that help us stay stuck. Will we be perfect? Absolutely not. That said, he can help us become a better version of ourselves by making us look more and more like Jesus, which is God's goal in the first place. His goal is to take us from creation to child by, by asking Christ into our lives to forgive us, to make him leader and forgiver of our lives. And then once we're his child, it's his goal that we look more and more like Jesus because that will make us a better version of ourselves. That's his goal. That's his goal. Now I realize, like I've been saying, I, I know that there's times where it's not comfortable where he has to confront us, but please remember, he's doing it for our good so that we can remove things that keep us from moving forward. And when he does confront, apologize if you need to. Apologize to someone else you need to and then move forward. Or he might say something that you just need to follow through on. And, then, and if he says that, just take the proactive step. Trust him during your rut. Trust him during your stuck stage and take that step. Like I shared, there will be times where he needs to confront us. That's, that's him loving us. That said, there are also times where I, I simply think he wants to say things like, I love you. But if we're always saying, don't want to hear from you, God, What if he simply wants to say, I know it's hard, but I'm with you and I have a plan? What if he wants to say, I'm so proud of you for trusting me during this hard season? Keep going. Keep trusting me. Wow. I'm with you. I'm proud of you. See, if we're not careful... And we make this blanket statement that we don't want to hear from God. Not only are we allowing our blind spots to still be there if he needs to confront us on something, we're not hearing the encouraging things either. So it's so important 
that we look in the mirror number three and say, God, what's your take? What's your take? Because you want to get unstuck. Reflect by asking God for his take. As I shared at the beginning, there's so many things that the Bible has smarts on that it can help us go from stuck to unstuck. But for today, I just want to talk about one more. Listen to this very important verse in Proverbs 29. It says this, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. You know, if you're going to be someone that goes from stuck to unstuck, it's time to reimagine. It's time to reimagine. Here's something we have to know about ourselves. You know, studies show that we, we drift. In fact, studies show that it, it only can take 30 days for us to start drifting. And so it's so easy for us to get stuck and stay stuck, especially when life just keeps going and going and Monday hits again and Wednesday hits again and a new year hits again. And if we're not careful, we end up settling for what life throws at us and we allow life to dictate us what we do, how we make decisions, how we feel, and so on. We accidentally live life on life's terms instead of chasing after all that God has for us. I've been stuck for a while. I've tried my best, I really have, but nothing's changed. Maybe it will always be this way. So many live life on life's terms. Now don't get me wrong, I realize that you can't control everything, and sometimes you have to accept the hand that's dealt to you. That's not what I'm saying here. What I am saying is a vision can help us reimagine. It can help you reimagine what life could be like. He can give you purpose, and you can go after it. Sometimes it's the people that have been doing things for a while that accidentally get stuck and need to again gain God's perspective so that he can help them reimagine life and how it could be. And once they have that perspective, chase after it with all they've got until it becomes reality. Let's make this real. Some may need to reimagine what their marriage could look like instead of accepting stuck. Even good marriages get stuck and need to be reimagined. God, I'm, I'm in this marriage because I, because I love them. God, show me what I can do today to help my spouse live a better li- life. Some may need to reimagine parenting. God, it's important for me to have a great relationship with my kids Help me to have an awesome relationship with them. Help me not to waste so much time with them or help me to not get angry at every little thing that they do. Some may need help, God's help reimagining in their schooling or career. My schooling or career is important. I entered college to learn how to help people. This semester, help me to do better. Help me to reimagine what it can look like to enter in and not get lost in the, in the high school or college shuffle of life. Lord, I started this career because my goal was to make a difference in this world. My goal was to help people. Would you remind me of that? Would you help me to reimagine what it could be like to come into this career again with a different perspective from you? Show me how to do that. Some may need help reimagining their finances. God, I I need your help. Show me how to be a better steward of the finances you have graciously given me so that I can live and be a blessing to my family and even be a blessing to others. Some may need God's help reimagining their friendships. God, I'm stuck and I'm alone. Show me how to reach out because it's so hard to trust people. I'm discouraged. Show me who I can trust. Now flip the script. God, show me how to be a better friend because there's someone out there that needs a friend. Some may need reimagining their whole lives as, as just in general. God, I know that your son died for me so that I can live for him. Did you know that? It doesn't stop at his death. He didn't die so that we could stay stuck. Again, he loves you in your stuck. 
That doesn't change. But he didn't die so that you could stay there. He died so that you could live for him. It doesn't stop at the cross. For many of us, the cross is the beginning. He died. He came back so that we can now live for him. Some of us need to reimagine that. God, I know your son died for me. Show me how to live for you because life hits hard at times and I can get stuck. Show me how to live this one and only life for you. Show me how to live for your purposes. Help me to stay focused so that I can live this one and only life. You died for this life and now I'm going to give it back to you. Because you want to get unstuck. It really is time to reimagine and I said this earlier, I heard that, I've heard it said that, that just within 30 days, people can start to drift. And so once about every 30 days, we need a reminder of what this life is about so that we don't drift. And so the, the vision and reimagining of God stays alive in our hearts. But honestly, it takes time to remember. It takes time to reflect and it takes time to reimagine. You actually have to stop the car. And maybe you have to pry on the wheel a little bit to eventually get it unstuck. And it's the same in life. It takes time to reimagine and reflect and to remember so that you're just not doing this. Listen into this verse. It's such a powerful reminder of setting aside time. Psalm 46, and any of you that have ever had a job that you had to be on the 8 for at 8 o'clock in the morning, you get me. Look what it says in Psalm 46. Step out of the traffic. Take a long, loving look at me, your high God, above politics, above everything. It's so tempting to look at this verse and picture a serene setting where you're sitting on the beach and you're sipping your favorite drink. Oh, just picture your favorite drink right now, listening to your favorite tunes, and you're about to get, you know, an Uber Eats meal is about to come to your, your, your beach scene. You're going to get your favorite meal. There is no distraction. The kids are doing fine. They're playing perfectly. It's so tempting to look at that verse and picture that scene. But I challenge you to go home and read Psalm 46. It's only 11 verses. It will take you like three minutes. If you read it, you'll see that the scene is very chaotic. It's very chaotic. And in the chaos, it's encouraging them to step out of the traffic and connect with God. Same with us. Our lives are busy. They're chaotic. Sometimes we go at breakneck speeds and, and don't hear that. I'm not even saying that's necessarily wrong. But because our life just keeps going and going and it gets faster and faster and because we learn how to do things better and better, sometimes we have to step out of the track of, of traffic of our lives and take a long look at God and be intentional. Because if you never stop, then the wheels start to spin. And before you know it, you're stuck. Or worse, you've dug a deeper hole. Or worse, worse, you're like that hamster where you're thrown off the wheel. And then you're like, why am I stuck? It takes stopping so that the wheels will stop spinning. It takes stopping to remember it takes stopping to reflect. It takes stopping to reimagine so that you can go from stuck to unstuck. And because it is so important to intentionally stop, let me recommend a couple things. I would recommend that you would try once a month to get away for a morning or a couple or, or, an, or an afternoon or even a couple hours so that you can step out of the traffic of life and look at God and say, God, tell me what I need to know. Show me. Give me your perspective. I would also recommend 
that you at least take a few moments or minutes on a consistent basis to step out of the traffic and take a look at God so that he can help you remember, so that he can help you reflect, so that he can help you reimagine. You can do that anywhere. You can do that at your house. Maybe you have to step into your room a moment, step away from all your technology, step away from everything, and just for a few minutes remember that God got you through the last time and he can do it again. When you're worried at 3 a.m. wondering if there's more month than money, remembering the last time there was more month than money, that he can do it again. Remembering the last time you were stuck in your marriage and it doesn't feel good this time either, taking a few minutes out to remember that God can do it again to reflect, to reimagine, God, what can my life look like? You could do it at work, on your 15 minute break, just take a few minutes to connect with God. Lord, help me to reimagine, I've been at this job for 10 years, help me to reimagine it from your perspective. You can do it with your friends. You can do it on your commute by listening to the Bible app. The point is you can do it anywhere. So as the worship team is coming back to the front, again, remember that, take that honest assessment part. I have a few questions as we close this part of the service. Would worry not keep you stuck if you simply took time to remember all that God has already done for you? Taking you from a worried heart to a peaceful heart. Taking you from a worried heart to a thankful heart? Could reflecting help you avoid at least some of the blind spots that everyone has and faces? Guys, having blind spots doesn't make you worse, it makes you human. We all have them. Having blind spots doesn't make you worse, it just makes us realize we need Jesus because he doesn't have blind spots. It reminds us, oh, oh, I forgot, I need you, Lord. I need you, Jesus. Thank you for reminding me of my blind spot. You're not here to just throw me under the bus and tear me down every day. You're reminding me that I need you today. How could your life be different moving forward if you allowed God to help you reimagine what life could be and then asking him for the strength, courage, and smarts to help you see it become reality. Let's pray.